I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks. I really wanted just to get a video out this week. It's been a hectic week. There's a lot of stuff going on in the United States right now with the whole coronavirus thing. I've been out of work for a week. Uh, I've also been a little ill. Uh, not coronavirus, thankfully. Um, but I want to do a quick video with you guys on how to make a gin and tonic. Now, people think, oh, I know how to make a gin and tonic. Uh, this is how we had them in Spain. I think they're wonderful. Uh, it's something I pretty much make every week. Um, and it's simple ingredients, and you'll be surprised at what it doesn't have. It doesn't have any citrus juice, okay? So I started out with two goblets. Now, we found these in a restaurant supply store, uh, and these goblets are very reminiscent of what you would get a gin and tonic in Spain, or gin tonic in Spain. I'm a huge fan of the way they do things over there. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I have an orange, right? Uh, I just take off the peel, right? Um, because I just want the citrus oil, right? Uh, by the way, I'm getting ready for a virtual cocktail hour right now with our friends um, who are holed up at their home down the block from us. We usually get together with them on the weekend, okay? So just some orange rind, give it a good twist, a little bit of lemon rind, just the rind. There's a little pith on there, it's not a big deal. Give it a nice twist. You want to get all those beautiful, beautiful oils into the glass. Okay, you can do this the peeler, I guess, but I like to have a little pith in there. Uh, some ice, a fair amount of ice. Okay, um, these are big drinks, okay? Uh, you, this is not a drink for the light of heart. Uh, this is a decent sized drink, and it's not meant to be guzzled. It's kind of meant to be sipped and enjoyed with friends. So it is a big drink, but maybe you can only have one or two. You don't need to have three or four of them, okay? Uh, you can tell maybe they have a little uh, problem with the booze. Now, I just like having gin and tonics, okay? Uh, I'm not really going to measure them. I'm just kind of going by the glass. I'm using uh, Beef Eater, one of my favorite gins. Um, it's old man kind of London dry gin. Um, I just think that it's great for gin and tonics. And I'm just going to top off. It's probably about a two ounce pour. Like I said, it's not a small drink. So about a two ounce pour. And then I have tonic water. And you can use fancier tonic water, uh, but just don't use anything cheaper than Schweppes. I think Schweppes is one of those great brands um, that makes a great tonic water. I've had people bring over like store brand tonic water and it's not good. Schweppes. Um, I don't know what the other brands are. There's Fever Tree. There's all these fancy brands, but I think this is great uh, kind of general gin and tonic. I'm going to pour the, the, uh, the uh, tonic water over my knife. Um, and this was explained to me that it helps kind of swirl the gin in there. Uh, I don't know if it really makes that big of a difference, but you want to make sure you're using fresh tonic. It's not been sitting in your fridge for a week. Okay, nice and fizzy. Give it a little stir. And that's my gin and tonic. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I try and post weekly. Hope you enjoy. Have a great night. Stay safe.